The shit that would come out of his mouth every single take was completely different. And we were just <laughs> cracking up. He's one of the funniest people that I've ever met. Easy one. That's the weasel for me. Yeah, weasel. Yeah, yeah. It's that's so, so fun. filthy and annoying. You know? I don't think that guy is going to be much good company in a confined space. I think he'd just be, you know, urinating all over the floor. Not a good conversationalist. You know, he's he's not really house trained, I don't think. So Weasel would probably be the worst quarantine partner. Maybe a decent Scrabble partner. I'm not sure. Um, it's tough to say. No, 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 no. You know what, Margo? I would, I would take the Weasel over Peacemaker. That self-righteous D-bag, bully, jerk, I, with his ugly helmet on no i have no interest in being around that guy yeah you would have to listen to his rhetoric for two weeks straight oh. and it might be a bit wearing shark guy you know king shark i, I don't want to see him down a dark alleyway i would shit my pants i think king shark probably i think would is the one i would like least to be with because i think he might end up eating you you know he would not be able to resist his his instincts so he'd be my least favorite you would definitely die. You would definitely, with everyone else, you got a shot at survival. Yeah. King Shark, no, nah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna make it. King Shark only because I'd fear for my life. I think, he, <laughs> I think he's a dude. Uh, Weasel is just, yeah, we just don't vibe. I wouldn't like to be quarantined with uh, King Shark. I keep asking the same thing. I, um, don't worry, I'm definitely pushing for that. I'm always bringing it up. I really want to see that too. She was just saying it a minute ago, right? Yeah. Like when we were offline. Gen genuinely, I just, yeah. I, that is a relationship I want to explore. Mine would say uh, just looking for someone to make my peace huge. Uh, Why well, do I have to follow that? <laughs> I am here to serve. Oh, that's a good one. All right, that's a good one, yes. I have no idea what Holly would say. I think she would have some pretty, uh, She'd have a great slideshow of pictures, I'm sure. I'm a grandfather. I don't even know what a dating app profile is. Tell me what a dating app profile, what, what do people, what do you say on your dating app profile? Mine would be, uh, my javelin is robust, strong, can last for hours. And also I throw a separate javelin that is not on my penis, which is what I was referencing earlier. Good. That Subtle. would be my bias. Mine would say you can get rid of me, but I'm going to keep coming back. Hey. Boom. Hey. <laughs> Orang. There we go. I like it. Mine was, mine was, you may find me disarming. Uh, I'd love to see what Poker Dot Man would say for himself. Looking for a good time? Do you like <laughs> long walks on the beach? Do you enjoy <laughs> laughter? Please do not swipe on me. That's probably what it would say. Mine would probably be like, um, if you want a scissor hold, you want me to crush you to death, and you're into that kind of like, <laughs> You're into that kind of romantic. She would never get a date, by the way, because she would be Wait, like, don't date me because I'm going to kill you. Do you know how many guys have actually messaged me on Instagram saying, Mongol's hot? And I'm like, really? Really? <laughs> really? They, some guys think she, the scales are hot. I don't know. You have to be an animal lover. I think she would state that clearly in her bio. Have to love hyenas and, um, yeah. I don't even know. It also depends what point you catch us, right? Because Harley's had so many different iterations, but even with Polka Dot Man, there's a point at which he's like, I'm a superhero. <laughs> like, I, I think that profile would crush, actually. Yeah. He would like, hmm. I was shocked. That was like, what? <laughs> I think my reaction is is pretty much in the movie because like I don't think that line when I scream at him, what are you doing in your tidy white is is actually written. I mean, I want to know where he got that prosthetic. Yeah, my thing was, what are you hiding? Is it real as a prop? I didn't know if he put any um, done any padding in there, but it was um, it was very impressive. You keep saying they added a future, they added a future, they added a future, <laughs> and one day it was like, well, no one knows this. That bottom is actually my bottom. We've been, there's a lot of CGI in the film. As we know, everything in this film is it's all CGI. And uh, that junk in the trunk is actually a javelin, mine. Yeah. John is hilarious. I mean, he's one of the funniest people that I've ever met. So I wish I'd been around on those <laughs> just to hear the cracks that he would make. The shit that would come out of his mouth every single take was completely different. And 
honestly, as ridiculous as his outfits are in the movie, what he says is far more ridiculous on a, on a daily basis. So he was endlessly entertaining. When I was younger, uh, we had um, in Portugal, like the Barbie, the Ken, and the action man <laughs> and i just remembered like about the action man with just like the the tidy whitey so um i i couldn't just like separate them for me he was the action man i took my shirt off like two scenes before john i mean it, it's just so dumb you know what why why would anyone want to put themselves up with that you know it's a uh, very unnecessary. I, I should really focus on reading the whole script the next time, not just my lines. It's, he looks great in them. I got to admit, I don't, you know, he's he's good in his tidy whities We got more tidy whitey scenes uh, from him in the Peacemaker TV show, too. So just wait. We've got whole scenes of tidy whities I think best costume ever. I think best costume ever. I mean, if you guys in have an award for for costume this year's is definitely john cena's <laughs> yeah totally agree yes <laughs> i think we're all doing the same thing we we look at the you you see a specimen like john cena anytime yes. he shows yeah. you more flesh than you're accustomed to seeing it's always a reminder of oh yeah i should be doing sit-ups yeah yeah you know if i had it to do over again i would have moved the awkward brown skid mark to the front first scene was my first day of shooting was the beach and I got to run through explosions and be in like this giant, it, I mean, the set was just so crazy and insane and it was the perfect way to set the tone for the whole movie, both for the movie that you're going to watch, but also for us shooting it. I remember the one where we was on the roof and we're on the roof and we've got the thinker character and we're all walking around him and Margot's having to, you know, follow Rick Flagg's investigative style, but she just keeps getting it wrong. And we were just <laughs> cracking up because the way James wanted to shoot it, it was like moving camera. Margot would say something really stupid and funny and we'd all try and keep a straight <laughs> face because we had to walk into shot and go, no, 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 Margot, no, no, no. It's so funny. It was a funny moment. Helicopter, helicopter. I mean, the helicopter scene before we jump out, that was mine. Yeah, get to the chopper. Yeah, that's what, that's the best scene. My funniest scene was probably on the beach. Um, you know, uh, Harley Quinn's got a big gun and then like Nathan's like diving with no arms and um, I'm running up mountains and jumping on helicopters and it's just like, it's <laughs> everywhere. We just came out of the ocean, so it was nice and breezy and wet, but it was like a really good temperature controlled. Um, ocean. <laughs> My gosh, I'll say it because you're from MTV and I think it's, I want to rep it. I am not a good dancer, but I had so much fun <laughs> dancing in the nightclub. Um, that was really, really, really fun for me. Very good scene. I can't believe we haven't spoken about that scene more. And I was very jealous that I wasn't in the scene. There's a lot of goofing around. <laughs> there's a lot of silliness, a lot of big laughs. Uh, but then there's also these challenges that, that are fun. And I thought the, the big tussle that me and John had, that was a lot of fun to prepare and, and to, to, to go through. And it was, a, it was a great experience working with John on that. I guess the funniest for me was uh, a scene that I have with Margot, with Harley Quinn, that we're kissing and breaking stuff all over the place in the palace. And we did that several times and we broke stuff that we shouldn't have break. And that was probably the funniest scene that, that I had. My funniest scene is when the star is on my face and the final scene is, ah, ah. This is, it was fantastic. <laughs> uh, I love the scene in which we tortured Harley. That was a lot of fun. Not because of torturing Margot Robbie. That's not something I want to see. But because uh, that was a scene in which Margot got to do some of her Cirque du Soleil tricks that I didn't know she was able to do, like picking up keys with her toes and bending her body into like various switch army knife positions. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. But actually just shooting the whole Harley uh, action sequence in general was a blast. My Little Pony. And why? Do I need an, a reason? Hello. No, please, God, no. The 80s and 70s sitcom Airwolf, or possibly the A-Team, maybe Starsky and Hutch, uh, BJ and the Bear. This is gonna sound really stupid, but we talk all the time about the Suicide Squad going out and killing the kids from Riverdale. The Three Stooges. Tom and Jerry, Animaniacs. Game of Thrones with the Suicide Squad. That would be an odd thing to watch. The Narcos show, you know, 
Narcos show with this. What's this one? Suicide Squad. I see that. I can see that. Teletubbies. Is that, they still work. Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. Suicide Squad and Paw Patrol. It's a match made in heaven. But you know, I started out doing the Scooby Doo movies. So having the Sco- having Scooby Doo, um, you know, team up with the Suicide Squad would be pretty fantastic. I think. I don't know, man. That's a good question. Crossover. I'm not much of a collaborator. You know, I like to keep <laughs> things kind of like. There it is. That's true. Boomerang does not play well um, with others. Well, I mean, it's really hard to tell. I mean, on the one hand, the you know, the, the, the Guardians have all that science fiction tech. I mean, listen, Rocket's able to blow up moons. So if they come armed, you're in pretty big trouble. But also, I don't think they got anybody as powerful as uh, Polka Dot Man or Ratcatcher in the Guardians. So they, you know, it'd be a pretty fair fight. There's Easter eggs in this movie. I didn't go as Easter egg crazy as I do with the Guardians movies. But there's a there's 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 a lot of plenty of Easter eggs, some major Easter eggs that I, I can't believe people from the press haven't seen yet. But that's how it goes. <laughs>